Welcome to day eight of Outshine Virtual Film Festival. I'm Jen Kritz, the board vice chair, and we are thrilled to have the filmmakers and cast from the feature film, First Blush, for our post-show Q&A. We're gonna show a preview of the film before we start the Q&A, but first, we have a community partner, and that is Pride Lines. So here's a little video from the kids at Pride Lines. Pride Lines represents safety, it represents a brave space, and it represents family. I became involved at Pride Lines when I was about 16 years old. Um, I was kicked out of my mom's house, which was constantly happening over and over again. Um, I heard about Pride Lines through a friend of mine. I stumbled across Pride Lines in a Google search when I was 14 and first coming to terms with my trans identity. We were in desperate need of a community partner to provide space for our administrative offices for our program. And we reached out to Pride Lines, we had one meeting, and they said yes. And so our offices are here. It's really been fascinating to watch the evolution of Pride Lines go from an organization that was maybe just a group of people that met occasionally as a support group to a really full-fledged community center with an amazing space that offers programming for everybody. Pride Lines represents community, a avenue of where people can come, be themselves, their own skin, be able to communicate with others uh, without fear of anything happening to them. I went, I believe it was like a Wednesday or something, and I was introduced to the people at Pride Lines, and it became a ritual for me. You know, I met a lot of good people there, and I kind of have my drag career to thank for it too, because I met my friends who encouraged me to do drag through Pride Lines. Pride Lines is always, like, always down a throwdown. Like, Pride Lines is always down to whatever um, is an educational opportunity for our community, whatever is a social opportunity for our community. If a space needs to be created for us to uh, thought partner or think about things, um, that's what Pride Lines is. Pride Lines and their leadership were the first folks really to take a risk on our organization to say, hey, what you're doing is really aligned with our mission and we believe in you, we believe in you, we believe in your leadership, we believe in your mission. Um, and I think it was the first uh, long-standing Miami-Dade County institution to do that for Soul Sisters. I'm involved with Pride Lines through Project Save. Um, they um, provided me with a plane ticket to go to college and I thought that was really great because I didn't have anyone else doing anything for me. Um, Pride Lines has also ensured that they allowed me to, well, help me with getting a scholarship, a full scholarship um, to Cornish College of the Arts, which was located in Seattle, Washington. A place that is affirming and that will always be open um, to all of us. Um, so to me, it's, it's like home. As a youth, you know, getting that sense of community and volunteer and um, getting to be around like-minded individuals you know, I wouldn't have the passion to be a part of the community as an adult. And one of the things that I think is so powerful about this space is you can, that you can be a black trans woman um, who is generally under attack in the society in which you live and come here and know you're going to be okay. Pride Lines to me represents safety, family, community, pride, and love. Family love you no matter what and they don't judge you and pride lines is a family i am pride lines i am pride lines i am pride lines i am pride lines we are Pride Lines. <laughs> I am Pride Lines. I am Pride Lines. I am Pride Lines.
Surprise! Turning 30, does it feel different? Like, I guess I hit all the marks I'm supposed to hit in my 20s. Married, employed, I'm probably not gonna die poor and lonely, so yeah, I'm doing great. Yeah, but I didn't ask if you were doing great. I asked if you felt different. If something were to happen, is it worth risking what we have? We're solid. We're solid, right? Hey, guys. We're dating. Like how? Who does what with who and what goes in? John, we just don't want to see you guys throw away what you have. We've never been happier. So we're all in this relationship, but you two are still in your own relationship. To us. Us. I just want a normal relationship. No, you don't. Otherwise, you would have one. What's a normal relationship anyway? I'm never sure of anything. I'm still not sure about this. It's not about being sure or unsure. Maybe it's just about being brave. We are excited to have the filmmakers and cast from First Blush here at Outshine. Please welcome Victor Newmark, the writer, director, and producer, Rachel Alleg, who plays Nina, Kate Beecroft, who plays Olivia, Christopher Moni Lawson, who plays John, and the composer, Michael Walsh. Welcome to Outshine. How are all of you? Good, good, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> so my first question here is for Victor. Uh, Victor, at Outshine, we are used to the typical story of a straight relationship being disrupted by a gay person who sweeps in and breaks them up, and it's quickly turning into a gay love story. This is not that. This is a married couple who meet a woman and let her into the relationship, and they become a thruple. So what caused you to want to create this story, Victor? Um, well, I, I like that, that it's it's not a necessarily a gay love story or a straight love story or a bi love story. The characters themselves don't uh, seem to discuss that aspect of it all, all that much. What was more... Uh, interesting uh, t uh, for me to explore was uh, a polyamorous relationship in, in whatever form uh, you know it could take, and I just felt like I hadn't seen a movie quite like this where you kind of follow the beats of a uh, pretty much every studio rom com or love story, but to do it with three people instead of two, and to find all the fun complications of that, you know, where you get. Not only one like fight scene, but like two fight scenes, and for different reasons. And there's just so many, you know, fun things I thought you could do with that. Well, considering the topic of polyamory, one would imagine this could be a highly sexualized film, but you avoid that and delve into the personal relationship of the three of them. Um, why did you make that choice? Uh, I, I feel like it's been done, and you know. There's plenty of erotic thrillers out there, and you know, like I feel like that's that's been done already, uh, and it's not the most interesting thing about it to me. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want it to feel like exploitative at all. You know, I was trying to get at something. Sex is obviously a part of it. You know, it's part of any relationship, but it's almost like the first stop on this train that they get onto. So felt like it made sense to sort of knock that out quickly and then get to the all the stuff underneath, which is way more interesting. Um, my next question is for Rachel. Rachel, you are an extremely prolific actress. You have 102 acting credits on IMDb. I don't even have that many posts on my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter <laughs> combined. I don't know if you ever sleep. Um, the event that sets the tone of the movie, as we saw in the trailer, is Nina turning 30 and how Nina feels about being beyond her 20s and wondering if she's accomplished enough at 30. Mm -hmm. Rachel, do you, or Rachel, you do an excellent job portraying the inner struggle of Nina. Mm -hmm. 
since you have done so many films, what was it about this project that drew you into this role? I fell, I fell in love with Nina. Um, I fell in love with the story as well that like Victor said, it didn't feel like we were exploiting the situation. We were looking at a very human experience of an individual, Nina, coming to a certain point in her life going, questioning it. And I think that's a really attractive vulnerability in a person where we question what we've done, what we're doing and what we will do. And I was just drawn to that dynamic of Nina and the whole storyline because, you know, I remember as a kid when somebody said like, I'm 30 or I'm 32, it's like, oh my gosh, they're an adult. They know everything. Their life is set. And then you realize life, you never figure it out. And I thought it was really a story about like people trying to navigate the doubt that we feel in life, whether that be in relationships and careers or all of the above. And Kate, you play a very, very complex character. Uh, what drew you into the role and, uh, and, and attracted you to that? Um, well, I think in that point of my life, I had just got out of, I was living in London five years, um, going to drama school there. And um, I do the Globe and Royal Shakespeare Company. And so I was really just kind of like a Shakespeare actor. Um, you know, she was an actor and then, um, I moved back to LA because my visa was up and I saw this part and I read it and I was just like, this is really well written. And I'm like, with Shakespeare, I'm so used to this really rich material and these complex characters. And then it's hard to find in LA that kind of complexity. And when I got this, I just felt like this is just so relatable and well written. And I felt like I know knew all these characters and maybe there was some aspect of myself. But um, yeah, I just really, I thought it was well written. Yeah, and something that I would normally say as a person, so. Did you just compare me to Shakespeare? <laughs> that's, that's crazy. I, that was oddly enough my next question is which play in Shakespeare is this most like? <laughs> Ooh. I'm just I'm just kidding. But if you know, <laughs> no case. Think about it. I'll come on. You can come back, anyway, come back yeah. to us on that one. <laughs> so uh, Christopher, the character Drew is such a sensitive guy, whereas your character, John, is really like the classic dude in the film, and you play John with such a great rhythm. What was it like playing that role without letting it fall into a stereotype? Oh, that's a good question. Um it was, it was very, I, I won't say challenging, but for me, it definitely was something different than what I'm used to. Um, growing up and just in college, like I was always like the comedic relief and always just the funny guy and things like that. And I do have comedic parts in this film, but I felt like my character was more just like, just, just calm and just chill, which I felt was, something that was going to push me to to get better at and i just like everyone else said like just reading the script i was just like whoa like you know i i can push myself to be this guy and i i had a lot of fun doing it so yeah. michael the music is amazing in this film and it really moves the film along um tell me about your process and in working with victor how the two of you have worked together Sure. Thank you very much. Um, Vic and I have known each other for years and we've worked on various projects uh, over time. And uh, I'm usually recording different types of music and all sorts of genres. And I send it to him to get some feedback. And I was working on some uh, sort of ambient uh, synth based uh, stuff. I sent him some tracks and he said, I'm working on this film. I think that this would be a great fit. So he sent me over a rough cut of what he had without music and we just discussed like oh here i think we should have these beats and these emotions and i mean the acting was spectacular the writing was great so i really wrote to the scene and i tried to make sure that you know it was accenting where appropriate 
subdued where appropriate, you know, and just kind of like to help drive the story along. Um, and it was just an incredible experience. I love seeing it all come together. Well, everyone's bringing up the writing and I have to agree, Victor, the writing is excellent. And I have to screen a lot of films and it's a nice surprise when I'm sitting there watching it and I'm not kind of going, like you're, yeah, you're, you're really, it's, it, it captured my attention the entire way. And I wanted to ask you, tell me, how long did it take for you to write? Longer than I wanted it to. Uh, <laughs> I, I wrote the first draft years ago and um, I wrote that in a couple months. And then I was depressed for a couple months after that just because the first draft was so far away from like how good I needed it to be. And I was so frustrated that I couldn't get it there. And then it was just a process of doing a few drafts, a few drafts here, a few drafts there. And over time I got it there. So I'd say it took about probably two years to get the script to the point where we could shoot it. And then, and then we're rewriting it as, you know, as I cast, you know, like, they brought so much to it and I wanted to sort of personalize some of the role, you know, some of the dialogue for them. And we, I reworked uh, Olivia's character a little bit, uh, you know, based more on like Kate's energy and Drew for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, you're, you're just kind of, you keep honing it as you shoot it. Um, and then I also edited the movie myself. So I feel like that's just another draft of the script really. So uh, I've been working on the script for a long time. I, I just finished it, I feel like. <laughs> well, you know, that's an amazing thing that you uh, adapted your script after casting as well. Not a lot of writers like to do that. <laughs> so that's that's pretty impressive. Um, tell me about the process you went through in casting and who you uh, casted first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I first. Um, it was a big open casting call on Backstage.com and uh, just got thousands and thousands of reels and it was just the process of digging through you know everyone and uh trying to like find my gems you know and then and then get people in and we saw you know i saw a few good people but then it was then it started to become more about like okay what kind of chemistry are they gonna have um and then when rachel and ryan who plays drew i'd seen each of them separately and i kind of knew i was gonna cast them but i wanted them to meet and then i had them come in for a day um, and read, and then once they read together, I was like, okay, cool, we're good. So, <laughs> um, and then Kate was like shortly after, and then uh, Jordy and Chris came uh, maybe a week or so after that. Like, I think I knew I was gonna hire Chris just based on his reel, because he had this one scene where he was just reacting to something in this really deadpan way. I'm like, oh, that's exactly, that's exactly <laughs> what I to do. Great, well, yeah, let's do it. But then finding, the right John and the right Carrie and like, you know, because Jory has this manic energy that like I, I wanted to bounce off of Chris's sort of like brick wall energy, you know? Yeah. Wow. And what was the process of rehearsal with the actors? Did you allow space for improvisation? Um, yeah, depending on the scene, uh, like, there, you know, there are moments where like Carrie's going off about hummus and stuff, and it's like, yeah, just go, just try and make Rachel break. I mean, Rachel's actually kind of—you can see the, on the back of her head; she's laughing in one of the takes, but I couldn't lose it. Uh, so there's a bit of that. Um, I can get a little specific about dialogue, though. So bef generally, what we'll do is before we do a scene, we'll just all kind of sit together and kind of like do it, just you know, sort of a half half paced thing. And, then, and if I feel like there's any dialogue that needs to be shifted a bit, then we'll kind of just work on it from there. And then sometimes even in the middle of a scene, like after take two, I'll go and change a line or something if something's still not working. I remember that happened in particular in the tent scene with Ryan. We like added a line that ended up making a big difference, which is like, I just wish being in control made you happier. Which like that just kind of came in the moment. You know, so sometimes you just gotta be open to that stuff happening. Yeah. And so, I mean, as a group, how many of you have been doing these virtual Q and A's since this movie started? 
Or, and I'm talking about for this movie specifically. Uh, I haven't done any. I haven't. I've done, I've done one. <gasps> but they, they didn't let Cass. I wanted you guys. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> <laughs> How dare please, you. Said, please invite the cast. Yeah. <laughs> so. I really wanted them. I feel <laughs> this is way easier. <laughs> this is way <laughs> yes. Yeah, it divides it up for sure. I did yeah. a Q&A last night, and I had a partner asking the questions. And I thought, oh, wow, this is so easy. You know, you really just, when you hand it back and forth to somebody, it, it does make a difference. So, yeah. but I am so curious, you know, how, how is everybody dealing with, with COVID? And this must be, you know, obviously you are all creative people. Mm -hmm. I mean, is this where, are you going right into your, your craft and doing stuff at home or how are you all dealing with it? I'd be interested to hear from everyone all at once. No, <laughs> one by one, preferably. T totally um, well adjusted, super, I feel super great, healthy and creative and uh, no, I'm a mess, man. Like, <laughs> it's a disaster. Uh, no, it's been horrible. <laughs> No, it, 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 for me, it comes in waves. For the first couple of months, I couldn't really do anything creative. The idea of even trying to promote a movie or something just seemed like, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I've been writing a lot more now. And then, but then I'll spend a week like thinking the world's going to end and then I won't really feel like writing. <laughs> so for me, it's been a process to say the least, for sure. What about you, Rachel? Um, I work with my acting coach once a week for five hours. A and I, I started that immediately because I was like, I cannot not do this. It, it just, it's so a part of me. And I knew if I, if I let go, then I, I felt I, it would be too fearful of like what the future looked like. So I was like, okay, what do I put, what can I do right now where I'm still going to practice? My mind doesn't get mushy and it's like a gym, right? Like you practice and you get better and you maintain. So that's been really significant. And, you know, I've been fortunate to where gigs have come here and there. Um, obviously nothing like what we are used to. Um, so there has been that as well. And a lot, a lot, a lot of video auditions that have kept me extremely busy. The only issue with those is like, you get the project information from your reps and it says date, either TBD to be determined, or it's like, fall of 2021 and it's like wait what yeah like what are you talking about yes. um so but like again you know just going okay well maybe next year will be just a really great year rachel's a machine man she doesn't yeah, stop she she an acting uh, terminator. Uh, yeah it's a lot of imd being a lot of you being on there so yeah. I, I i imagine that you're probably looking around your home and going what is this place that i've been in I've discovered I'm really good at jigsaw puzzles. Like, <laughs> jigsaw puzzles. you just see that piece in the corner and you're like, I know it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm curious, are a lot of you doing these self tapes? Cause I know that's the new auditioning through COVID and it's always been kind of a way of doing that. Um, Kate, have you been having to do the self tape thing a lot? Um, I have done a few self tapes um, for, Actually, a lot of commercials because they want people who um, have been quarantining together. Um, so me and my boyfriend are put up for so many things um, and he's not an actor, but you know, um, they just want people who quarantine together and who can just be real together. So it's like a weird, it's a weird, it's a weird time. It's a weird thing, but yeah. Yeah, what about you, Christopher? Self-typing uh, of a storm? Yeah, but I was already doing that even before like quarantine. It's it kind of sucked because beginning of this year, like I started getting like more stuff, and I was like, "Oh, this is about to be my year." And then COVID was like, "Nah, buddy, nah." So it's no one's uh, year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, I've been getting a lot of voiceover stuff um, as of re recently from my reps and just doing uh, stuff like that. But just like Vic was saying, I spent like all of June writing a script because I was like, I have to do something creative and I, you know, finally finished it. And I'm like, cool. Now time for draft number two. So, yeah. Yeah. What about you, Michael? What's keeping you busy? Well, I'm quarantined away from my electric guitars and synths. 
So I've, but I have my acoustic guitar and I'm fortunate to be quarantined with a piano. So I haven't been thinking as much about like tones, you know, like different guitar pedals and like how I could create a cool sound. And I've just been thinking about the music specifically and, you know, like improving as a pianist and improvising. So like once I get back to that, hopefully I'll have like an expanded vocabulary for some unique textures. Well, I, I just, I find all of you guys to be such tremendous uh, actors and, and the fact that you put this film together, um, it's, it's unique, it's um, fun to watch. It, it, you all are very, very talented. Victor, um, the final question for you, this is really your first film that's really yours. Um, do you have any advice for other filmmakers out there who are looking to make their first film? Yeah, I, I've been thinking about this a lot. It's weird to have anyone ask me for advice. Uh, <laughs> like it's just, it feels a little weird. But uh, I'll say that how I went about this was I took maybe a little too long to get it ready, but I feel very good about the result. So I know a lot of people will say, just make something, just make something. And I, and I do agree with that. But I feel like if you're going to throw like, all of your resources at something and cash in all your favors and just like spend years of your life doing something like take a minute to really set up your shot. Take a second to like set yourself up for success, you know, work on the script, do another draft, like keep polishing, like don't, you know, do it forever, but you know, take a minute, work it, keep working it until you're satisfied with it. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. That's Victor Newmark, Rachel Alec, Kate Beecroft, Christopher Money Lawson, and composer Michael Walsh. Thank you for coming to Outshine. We look forward to seeing you at future film festivals. And we're going to end so with we're going to end with your trailer so people can look at it with fresh eyes. Yay. Love you guys. Thanks for having me. Love you guys. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks, Jeff. Thank, thank you guys for coming. Surprise. 30, does it feel different? Like, I guess I hit all the marks I'm supposed to hit in my 20s. Married, employed. I'm probably not going to die poor and lonely, so yeah, I'm doing great. Yeah, but I didn't ask if you were doing great. I asked if you felt different. If something were to happen, is it worth risking what we have? We're solid. We're solid, right? Hey, guys. dating like how who does what with who and what goes in john we just don't want to see you guys throw away what you have we've never been happier so we're all in this relationship but you two are still in your own relationship Jess. sure of anything. I'm still not sure about this. Maybe it's not about being sure or unsure. Maybe it's just about being brave.